hi everyone and welcome to today's RT time here on my YouTube channel. I am going to be playing around with this piece that I've done before on an, um, a plywood uh, A5 size uh, wooden board panel, but I'm not, I don't really like what I've done on this and I'm going to try and change this and use a variety of um, colors to change what this looks like. So I am going for probably, let's see if I do it, should I do it this way? I'm trying to think of which direction to do this. I'm going to do it this way. So I've changed the layout to landscape and I am going to start off by putting down and don't scream at me, but I'm going to put down some different colors and cover up this background. And then I am going to go into working with other elements on this as well. So I'll just put some different colors around. So the two colors I've just put on this one is light gray blue. And this other one is cold gray. So I'm just going to move this around on the board. I'll use one of my bigger brushes here. So I have been creating quite a lot of different floral uh, pieces recently and I really want to start being able to do what I do digitally, which I'll post and uh, some images of what I mean on this, on the side of this image. I want to be able to start doing some of the kind of pieces that I do digitally. So this is for me to start my learning curve on getting it, basically as far as I'm concerned, exactly in the same kind of um, format as I do with my digital art. So I just put this background on to cover what was there before so you can see it's not there anymore. Um, with acrylic paintings, it's amazing how many layers you get and you change your mind with things. And um, a lot of artists, which I know I've done myself as well, we usually would have painted this already, but I thought it would be nice to just see where the process goes from what it was to this. And sometimes you will, it's like I can almost hear the audible voices screaming in the background, no, don't get rid of it. But just adding some white gesso now and just trying to get some kind of blended look in the gonna add some other colors and just slowly kind of build in textures trying to carry it along around uh, the board and see what happens and just not trying to think too much about what I'm doing brush could be flowing a bit better. You can always spray water on this to get this a bit more blended but and there's different mediums you can use but let's just go with this. So I'm not really sure what I'm looking for but I'm just gonna keep on adding to this. So I'm thinking um, when I'm painting with my um, my acrylics, uh, well with my digital work and I just start putting colors down. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm just going around and thinking how I build the layers. So sometimes I will use like start with darker bases and then build up. So if I do this, I'm also trying to understand my brushes a little bit sometimes because they all do different things. And so I'm going to be playing around with this and trying to say, think about floral elements and how that can look on the painting. And it's all blending and mixing a little bit there, which I like quite a bit. And I've got some other boards. I'm going to be painting whatever is left on those other pieces that I'll come to another time. So I don't waste my paint. 
Right, I'm gonna use another brush and so I used violet, that was violet I used and then I've also used the sky blue, that was after the greys. Right, then I'm gonna try and use this. Um, it's mauve, pale mauve. Uh, one thing I've been doing recently as well is mixing my colors. So right now I'm just putting them on but I am going to actually mix a little bit of that with some white gesso in a minute but let's just uh, use this this is me using um, this is a slightly dampened brush this one so I'm just gonna pull it around a little bit thing also I'm trying to do is not to move the paint around too much just to kind of just put a little bit of a mark I'm just playing it's not that I know exactly what I'm thinking I'm thinking maybe flowers yes but they may not stay this color it's just building and just trying to think that I'm playing like I would with my actual um, my actual iPad so I'm going to mix this with white I said and I am sure that I brought one of my palette knives for doing that somewhere here on this table. Ah, here it is. Just get it. I'm gonna mix this in with some white. So I'm not being too precious about my brushes. This is acrylic I'm using and it can dry quite quickly, but I work quite quickly. So you can get lots of different mediums that can help you to um, to slow down the drying process for acrylic. And let me just add in some of the white into this and mix in it in. and you can take your time with this and things but I don't mind sometimes if it's kind of got a, a staggered effect on it. So there's different brushes you can use for this. These brushes I'm using actually I've realized are really good for, um, what's the word again, uh, for leaves so I will do some of those at some point soon I'm just playing around with this not really sure what I'm doing with it but let's see I think one thing for me is the more I'm experimenting then I am learning what I can and can't do so I don't get too precious about what I'm doing the idea is that it's a lot darker in the middle and then these areas are further up so, and then, it's a lot darker in the middle, so I'm going to use some black here, just a little bit of black. And mix in with this, it's like another kind of a grey, this is just the backing paper to, actually what I'll do is I'll just yeah, it's turned that grey already. Don't know what this is turning out like on your screen, but just plain. This is like the center of the flower idea. I think I will have to probably let some areas dry so that I can use some more details. So, and then I've got greys in there as well. It's not really going to show up very well. I'm going to do some leaves. I love this brush for leaves. And I'm thinking, well, I like doing them black, but I'm just going to start doing them with some of this. But first, I'm going to draw the branches. So I'm just letting the other areas dry and just doing some extra maneuvers here with the brush just using the tip and trying to make kind of organic looking shapes i'm going to go all the way around just finding areas i think branches could be in basically just going to check that this is in view because that'd be really bad if i painted all of this and it wasn't in view so um yeah and then do 
patterns. So this is me, as I said before, trying to practice kind of the designs I've been doing on my Procreate um, app. And I just want to start painting pieces that are in the style of what I've been doing and practicing. Uh, that's quite a thick branch, but paint, I can paint in between them later on. So I'm going to start doing the leaves. And what I've been doing is I do a thinner bit and then I kind of do, I think I'll paint over these with um, darker or maybe some green actually. Sometimes I do the background and it's like a shadow. So uh, that looks very, the angle I'm in, let's just see. Might have to add some black in this again, but not yet. I'll just make these leaves and then I will add another layer. So I sometimes have to wet the brush because it needs to be able to smoothly put them on. Maybe this could go a bit higher there. So yeah, this might not be as dark as it needs to be, but I'll work over it. And so, so usually I'm standing up looking down, I'm sitting down and I'm not really sure what angles I'm getting here from these flowers. So you can see how I started that, it was very abstract and then I've slowly kind of started trying to put some shapes in and these this is all acrylic on the wood panel so I've really been enjoying creating these florals recently and I just wanted to start practicing what I've been doing digitally on my paintings so I really like this, the greys. Trying to use minimal palettes as well. So, and then trying to understand cool colors and warm colors and playing around with what works and doesn't work and seeing how I go. So you, you remember what I had on this before vaguely, but this is taking full control. So after I do all this, I'm gonna see if I can start adding Maybe some black leaves over that. So it's building a layer. So some of these might be considered like their shadow or something. Don't know. You never know what it's going to be like. Uh, sometimes when I'm watching other artists paint, I sometimes think that they've ruined the picture that I was looking at. I'm like, no, stop now, stop now. And um, But every day we're always pushing and we have an image in our head that we want. And if we don't have that on what we're looking at, we're not happy with it. So pl please forgive us for all those paintings that we've destroyed that you would probably have wanted to stay the way they were, but it wasn't what we had in our heads. So I've kind of done this image. I'm just gonna have a look at that. Yeah, I love it, it looks, that's quite nice. Um, so what I'm trying to think here of doing next is, um, Hoping that this is drying. I want to put some darker leaves and I think I should mix some of that with some kind of a green um, but I like the darker green so I'm gonna try and find a darker green. You can't you could mix it with a brown but uh, it is a cooler like a blue maybe a dark blue with some black. I can figure out where my blues are. That's what happens when I don't prep. Oh, blue's this one. Is this ultramarine blue? Ooh. Um, so I'm gonna squeeze some of that out. And I'm gonna use some black and mix these two together. You could always use, also I love Prussian blue actually. Just remember that. Prussian blue is pretty awesome. Let me see. Can I find it in my chaos? I have it. Oh, I just realized where they are. Um, some more, some more blues, it's cobalt blues. Um, what I'm finding is that with my mixing, with my mixing, I am, um, with black, I'm tinting it with other colors. So. Mm -hmm. 
I think I'll stick with the ultramarine blue because I have already squeezed it out. So let's see what this looks like. And then some black. So I've been mixing colors um, with Let's see, how can I say this? Yeah, so I've been mixing and you know, with whites. So I'll squeeze out a color and I'll half the color and I'll mix that half with white. Then after I've mixed that second layer down, then I'll take half of that color with the white and the color and mix it with more white. But um, in this case, I'm wanting to get a blue tint into the black. So I might not use all that black actually because I want the blue to be quite a little bit obvious. Like there'll be when somebody's looking at it, they're gonna go, there's another color in there. What is that? So I will mix that there. So I didn't use all the black. And I will go back in to get my so you can do different sizes of um flowers as well. I could do with a smaller brush if I wanted to add. I was looking at the tip here. So if I wanted to add like a smaller, I didn't. Let's see if I can do that with this. Now I need to use a thinner brush. I want to test this out. Let's just some I did something with it in there, probably shouldn't have. Let's do another one here. Hmm, I like that, that looks very yummy. So there's a hint of blue in this, the ultramarine blue. Now some of the water has come off on that. I'm just gonna dab it. Take your time and do things at your own pace, same. Goodness, that looks to be so yum. And drag and then play with the leaves. So I've really been trying to learn my leaves recently and oh, it looks so beautiful and yum yum. So that other layer was like a shadow layer of leaves. And that might come through, it might not. Just have to play around with it. But then also with these, there are textures on this because I can see when the acrylic dries, it's gonna have some of those bumpy bits are still going to basically stay on the, the plant. I've got thinner brushes actually, more detailed brushes. Don't have to use this for doing the actual stem of the so I'm enjoying adding these leaves it is kind of therapeutic because you're not thinking too much you just so this is kind of what I've been doing recently my artwork and I love the you know the abstract stuff as well, and this is kind of an abstract to me. It's an abstract floral. Um, it's not that I'm looking at something in front of me right now. I'm going by impression as well. So it's impressionistic, and then I'm trying to decide right. I'm using cool colors. Um, if I was using some other color that was warmer, I'd have to use it in a specific way, close probably to what would complement it and so it's just playing and seeing what works and I really like this so I want to do more of these um, kind of practice my floral pieces on these and um, I will have them available for sale either here um, you can contact me through this channel or um, I will have them if you're local in the shop that I am a five member partner uh, brick and mortar shop here in Karkintilic. So this looks so beautiful. Oh my goodness. 
I love the way that the leaves are and I'm really so interested in I've always wanted to figure out how to do these leaves and I think I was being lazy but I saw an artist doing this recently and I thought I need to get serious with my leaves so that's me practicing my leaves and there's so many things I mean the tools that we have there's so many things you can do with them and so I'm trying to get more technical with my work so hopefully I can do more of these sessions and really take it seriously here on YouTube to show you some of the things that I'm doing because I think I've not been doing that. I've tried but my schedule is trying to figure out what to do at any given time when you have so many ideas and then you don't really streamline things. So I have the opportunity when the kids are at school to be able to take my time and create videos and then also um, be able to talk without being <laughs> interrupted somehow. I mean, I could probably end up hearing them chat in the background or something like that if they were at home. So trying to see, right, if I leave that area alone and uh, where else could I now start? What I'm gonna do is use a like one of my thinner detail brush for um, putting some lines that I can then follow. So so it's just starting to So it's layering. I think with paintings it is the layering. I I think if I continue to try and be lazy in the way that I paint, I won't get what it is that I know I can do. So I'm having to force myself to slow down and not rush things. I wouldn't say this has taken that long because I kind of know what as I'm looking at it, I'm trying to judge what I'm doing, but um, it's a lot of fun. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so here I've got this plant and I'm trying to make sure that I give that flower a chance to still be seen. And let's not pretend here. I did kind of do this haphazardly, but the impression, it helps. And then you can come back in and build into these areas with a flower um, and put some lines coming out. So just not too much, just gently given the idea that something else is going on. So I'll just do maybe one more area here somehow. And the colors dragging through each other really helps as well. So it just gives it another layer. I could do this a lot thinner, but. Just clean that off. And get back to my flowers. So if I finish this flowers off, then I think I can call it a day, but I think I have a little while to go yet. So yeah, and I can make some bigger ones if I wanted, um, like I did with the other one at the beginning, but it's good to try out the different sizes of brush. I've got an even smaller brush I could try out. <laughs> um, there's so many different foliage that I could put in this. It doesn't have to be only this leaf this way. Um, I'd really like to figure out uh, what my flat brushes do as well. So I use the flat brushes to kind of spread that way. There's the fan brush. There's so many techniques. I think that's one of the things that stops creativity is if you have a tool and you don't know what to do with it. So I'm trying to make sure I know what my tools can do. And I know that I'll be able to do even more because when I'm using my apps on my laptop or iPad, it's helping me to understand what I can do with the brushes on 
um, on my iPad and so it's the same thing I need to do the physical just think of it as if I'm do using the actual brushes and see what they can do so some of this is still wet which I don't mind because it's kind of moving the colors into other areas but I need to focus sometimes I might have to tilt this to get the right angle for the leaf um, there's some kind of leaves I really like the look of where they're like just really tiny so I might try and do that somewhere they're like oh, I call them like the square leaves they're just really cute but I don't know if I've got one of those so let's see I'll know when I see it so I've not really paid attention too much to what I've done before I'm just putting layers and trying to see how it fits against the grey in the background as well. So I'm going to just stand up and have a look again. Yeah, so that looks quite nice. Um, I'll do it all here and then I'll see what I do with that from there. I might leave it there and call it a day but basically this is where I am right now is trying to create pieces that are similar to what I'm doing right now as I said I will um, post on this video as well like snippets of what I have been doing and uh, with my digital digital work and then um, yeah hopefully do more of these because I do have at least 10 of these panels and if I actually commit to just finishing those with you I think that would be quite good I have been doing some classes as well on Skillshare so I think I'll do some more of these on the that so maybe bigger pieces and take my time with it. I might need to put some more water on this. It's getting a bit, it's not flowing as easily. There we go, some water. Let's make sure that it's a nice consistency. Yeah, because what I've noticed is that if I put more water, it flows a lot better. But um, that leaf was a bit funny. I'm gonna have to shape it somehow. But I like it when you do the tip, pull, squish it down, pull it. You can wriggle it actually as well. I'm going to do a wriggly one. So you pull, wriggle, 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 wriggle. And down. So let's see if I did that within your view because I'm not sure if I did that where you could see it. So is there any other leaves anywhere? Right. So you pull wriggle 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 and then drag it as well so that's to make it bigger i think pull wriggle 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 and then and if i get ones like this which if they're really off i kind of put another little one there to pretend like i was deliberate <laughs> so it's pull wriggle 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 so let's look a bit bigger here because i did extra wriggling Looking at the shape. Pull, wriggle, wriggle. Pull, wriggle, wriggle. So that one is a bit of an angle thing. So yeah, I've got one little bit left up here. So as I said, I used ultramarine in this black. That was what I squeezed in to get this black. So this black is not just black, which was a Mars black I was using. I have added blue. And so it will change the way it looks. So looking at the impact part being there. This paint is still wet. I'm trying to see how to do this. Right, put 
one more because I've done a fancy thing there. So yeah, that's all the bits there. Um, so what would I add next to this if I wanted to brighten it up a bit and so reluctant to because I don't want to spoil it. I really like this already as it is. I'm going to have another look from the top and I'll just raise this up a bit more so you can see what I've been doing. Um, you can see I would put the flowers before and then I put the grey other shadowy flowers then the black. Obviously probably if this dried I could do some green as well but I might be tempted to maybe put some pinks in there or something. Let's see if I can do that. Um, I do have some pink. Do I just clean off this? did have another palette knife, but I'm not sure where I've put that one. I do have some more, but I like to use the smaller ones. So but what I can do is mix some of this with a little bit of white. Well, actually what I'll do is I'll do I'll let that dry at the moment and I will just take a sip of my tea. It's a little bit colder now, but anyway. And I will mix in a minute, but I'll just let that dry for now. I'm going to use the actual pink straight out of the tube. So this is what pink is this. It's just saying pink. It's a, a Tezza pink. I've used most of these already. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to use the pink. And what am I thinking about when I'm thinking of this pink? I want to kind of highlight stuff. So some of this is still a bit wet. Um, I don't want to cover too much of the other purples and things. So I'm going to go around and then I'll come back and do something else, like a bit more detail. On. I kind of just want it to look like it's a smudge of idea of colour. And um, then, yeah, then I wanted to pull it in a little bit more. Just some areas, not everywhere. Don't know what that looks like now. I don't know, it's an idea, but does it work? I'm trying not to second guess myself as well, because when I'm creating my pieces with my iPad, I don't, it's easy if you want it on technology to be able to reverse an idea but I don't always do it so I usually would color over something if I didn't like it. I try to make the experience like if I was painting a real painting what would I do? I don't like to what people probably think of uh, technology or digital work is that we cheat but at the end of the day you obviously have to have some idea about color and how you present stuff. So I wouldn't say that we cheat. I would say that it's another tool like everything else. Like if you're doing watercolors or gouache, it's another way to paint. So I'll mix this with some white and see what happens. Hopefully the black will not show through this. <laughs> it should have dried by now. So I'm making this a lot lighter and if you're doing this at home you could use a cleaner palette knife than I am using but I am flexible with my colors so even if I get a color mixed in with it I never see that as a bad thing I just go oh well it's just gonna add a little bit of a flavor to it so that's a lighter pink so I'm like right I'll just put some of it and I'm holding my brush sideways because I just wanted to kind of um, skim or skiff the top. It's not that it 
Um, yeah, so it kind of skips the top because it's then like a smudge. This is what I was saying about the brushes and the different ways of using our brushes. I'm trying to figure out what else I can do with them and trying to see what this will do to get different effects. So I don't know what this looks like. I'm going to look from up in a minute. Um, and not to distract it too much. So we've got to got the flowers like that. Then in the middley bits, it's going to do some dots to try and pull some areas in together, but making sure that you can see the dots. So I don't know, I'll look at it and I'll see what I think about it. I was so tempted to start dotting things around, but if I do that, I'll distract from this middle area here. Um, but I can mix colors and um, other colors and actually just paint in between it and do all sorts of things. But I like the floor, the way that the floor at the back, the way it was, so, so many things. So I'm gonna use up this paint. So I think they'll call it a day for that. And I will use up this paint that I had put. So I just get my big brush that I had at the beginning of the last one. So this is just the ending bit, but I'm just gonna use up my paint. I'm gonna use the lighter one first and just start putting that in. So I just wanted to make sure my brush was really dry because it doesn't have drippy drippy effect and this was another older piece that I'm going to paint over because I don't want to paint a forest like that I want to paint flowers and kind of a meadow of flowers and some mystery in there um, I don't just want to use that black like that so I'm going to use some white in it and make it a kind of a grey and paint that on. So this will be ready for our next session together. But this is why I do I always have to use up the paint. I never, I mean, only if I really plan things badly and I have to rush out the door or I just don't like wasting my paint. I want it all to work. That area in the middle is lighter. And as I said, it can be a foundation for the next piece of art, or it can be um, a sealant for the next layer. So I never think that it's a waste to use the paint on it. No matter what color it is, I will still use it to make sure that I have something uh, so that I don't waste it. I want it to all be as used as much as possible. So yeah, uh, I'll take that off and I'll let this dry and this was our session today. Um, so thank you for watching this and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do. Um, and you'll join me on the next nine wood panels that I'm going to do, which will be floral scenes, um, which I, as I said, I'm trying to practice. So thanks for watching and I will put all the description and links of anything necessary at the bottom. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.